Welcome to this week's BFA International Audio Blog. This is your host and friend, Keith Johnson, an ambassador of God's time, his clock, and God's Torah, his word, and an ambassador for God's tetragrammaton, his four-letter personal, powerful, and profound name. We at Biblical Foundations Academy are committed to inspiring people around the world to build a biblical foundation for their faith. So let's get this audio blog started. Uh, There's no need to delay the obvious. Israel is at war right now. In fact, over the last uh, few days, I've been in communication with a number of different friends that live in the land of Israel, and many of them will speak to me from whether it's their bomb shelter or as they've just run out or run in, uh, sirens in the background. It's a very disturbing situation for the people over there. If you haven't been aware of what's happened and how all of this escalated, then uh, I'm always going to be sure to give you a chance to, to get a little more information. One of the things I said I want to do is when able is to give a little bit of an international perspective. That's what the BFA is. Of course, last week, uh, we did not have an audio blog. Uh, There was so much going on on so many different levels. I didn't have time to sit down and even record this. But I do want to take a a moment to to give a listen in to my selected media outlet, the BBC. Let's uh, give them a minute and I will get right back to you. Watching BBC World News with me, David Eads. The headlines. Israel has escalated its aerial assault on Gaza, hitting hundreds of targets overnight. At least 75 Palestinians are reported killed. Israeli government spokesman Mark Regev has ruled out a ceasefire, while Hamas continues to fire rockets into Gaza. Ukraine's government has issued a warning to pro-Russian separatists holding Donetsk that it is determined to take back the city. Government forces have already driven rebels out of Slovyansk, another of their strongholds. Iraq says Sunni militants have seized nuclear materials used for scientific research at a university in Mosul. The UN's nuclear agency says the materials are low-grade and don't pose a significant security risk. And Argentina will take on Germany in the World Cup final in Rio on Sunday after beating the Netherlands on penalties. Those are the headlines here on BBC World News. Well, there you have it. Uh, that's what uh, uh, the highlights, of course, starts off with Israel in the midst of a, a, a barrage uh, of uh, missiles that are being uh, shot at Israel. And of course, uh, Israel being able to respond via airstrikes. There's a very, very serious possibility that there will be a ground invasion that could take place uh, into uh, into that area, which obviously escalates it. But there's no doubt that right now they are physically right now uh, in a war. If you ask anyone that's in Israel, they would say they're at war. And, and of course, the, this particular time, there's been an, an increase of the uh, the Qassam missiles that have come from Gaza. They've reached all the way to Jerusalem, uh, Haifa, Tel Aviv. Uh, they've got a wonderful system there uh, called the Iron Dome system. And in fact, that's a, that's a system I've got a chance to see up close and personal. Uh, Nehemia Gordon and I actually interviewed the former uh, defense minister uh, in front of the Iron Dome that was on display on Rabin Square. It was really an amazing uh, time. We actually uh, did a, a film day, uh, uh, an interview with him. That was actually a part of uh, a, a project that I'm working on now called Right on Time, which is for the seventh month. It looks like we're not going to be able to do the whole thing, but it, definitely we're going to be able to get uh, the, the one episode up and, and, and ready Uh, before uh, the seventh month. Who knows, maybe even more, depending on the response to our BFA summer bonanza, if we can get more people to to chime in and um, become a part of that, we might be able to even get more done. But we're working so hard right now. We've got a number of things happening. Uh, All of that's happening in the midst of the situation that's taking place over in Israel, which in a a strange sort of way, there's there's so much connected in terms of uh, what I've been researching and what we're promoting and what we're going to be sharing here in these next few weeks that uh, it's, it's, it's related on so many levels. I'm overwhelmed sometimes when I think about what I got a chance to see with my own two eyes while I was there. And now to be over in the United States, my heart is still there with our friends that are presently uh, under the uh, attack of missiles. I don't know how many. I think the last number I heard, there have been a, over, ugh, ah, I can't even tell you what the number is, hundreds that have been fired at Israel and then is- airstrikes from Israel into Gaza. And of course, there is a discussion right now going on on how much further they will go. You know, you hear about Ukraine and, and what's happening there. And then, of course, this 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 strange and and a very, very dangerous situation taking it on in Iraq with this organization called ISIS. I maybe could do a an entire audio blog, audio blog on them and the declaration of new 
Islamic State. I don't want to get into that uh, too much, but there is there's. Oh, I forgot to mention, you know, we've got Israel, we've got Ukraine, we've got ISIS. And then to, to, to give you a little chance to take a breather, they tell you about the World Cup. Who cares? I mean, are you kidding me? People playing soccer and kicking a ball. I guess that's to help people uh, disconnect from the reality that's taking place in the world uh, right now. But. Again, ISIS has uh, now moved on. They've got some uh, nuclear material, supposedly. Uh, one of the things that's been very, very disturbing to me is their destruction of biblical sites in uh, in that land. It's my understanding that they've, you know, gone to dismantle Jonah's uh, tomb and a number of other biblical, important biblical uh, uh, sites and biblical information and, and antiques, etc., that they are um, making their way to to get a hold of and to sell or to destroy. It's, it's very discouraging. In fact, it reminds me of a situation that took place just a few months ago. Uh, I had decided as I was working on uh, a part of a, a series, uh, the seventh month series, one of the things that I needed to do was to get to some areas that are not popular to go to. Um, one of those uh, particular areas, I mean, I went to places like, uh, you know, Nablus and Ramallah, uh, places like that. Well, one of the places that I needed to go to was uh, to, to Nablus. And Nablus is a place for uh, for us we'd call biblical Shem. I've talked about this before when I went up to Mount Eval and and got a chance to see the altar of Joshua. But when on this particular uh, visit, um, I was very, very close to uh, the tomb of Joseph. It's uh, a place that um, Israelis visit. Unfortunately, these days, they only get to visit there, I think, like once a year where they take buses in the middle of the night, literally in the middle of the night to go and to uh, to visit Joseph's tomb because of the the uh, difficulty to to get in that particular area and the sorts of um, conflicts that have taken place. In fact, uh, there was a a, a full out destruction of Joseph's tomb uh, some years ago where um, the Palestinian people around there uh, surrounded the place, let it on fire. And uh, it was just recently that they were able to get that fixed again. And now what they have is they actually have Palestinian security guards, police officers that are standing there. Um, and in fact, something just happened just a couple days ago where there were some arsonists that attempted to uh, burn down again, make another attempt to uh, to burn Joseph's tomb and to destroy it. And it was the Palestinian uh, Authority police officers who actually uh, dispersed the crowd, used tear gas. Well, one of the things that I did is I went to visit um, that place. Uh, when I said I wanted to go, uh, my driver uh, said to me, are you sure? And I said, absolutely, I want to go. And so we went into Nablus and I finally found it. And it was sure enough, there's an armed guard there. I asked him to let us in. He let us in and, and went in actually with my video camera and, and videoed uh, not only him taking us in, but, of course, the actual tomb and, and uh, the place where they believe that uh, Joseph was uh, um, actually buried at when they brought him out of Egypt. Well, there was one little thing that happened. I shouldn't call it a little thing. It ended up being a big thing. I was so excited about this uh, security guard letting us in and, and uh, letting me go in. I told him how much I appreciated it. And I began to thank him in Hebrew. Well, I, as I went with my camera to go and film everything, uh, my driver and him got into quite a bit of an argument because the argument was, that, well, why did you bring uh, this Hebrew speaking man to this place? I would have never let him in if I knew he was Jewish. And of course, I'm not Jewish. I That's not my, you know, that. I'm not Jewish. I'm, I'm, an, I'm an American. I just happen to be speaking uh, the Hebrew language at the place where, you know, Joseph's tomb was. And of course, when he heard that, he kind of got upset. And long story short, we got out of there. And uh, but I did get it on video. So <laughs> I'm hoping to put something together regarding Joseph's tomb. But the point is, is that when uh, things take place and there's there's conflict in different parts of the world, one of the things that the uh, the enemy will do is to go and attack the the very um Reminder of these these biblical uh, important biblical sites, and so certainly that's what's happening with ISIS. They're going to places like the tomb of Jonah and other places to either to take the artifacts to destroy the places. That's what happens in Israel on a regular basis uh, when there's something that takes place. They'll go and attempt to 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 wipe out the places that have a remembrance of the the people, the land and the language uh, of Scripture. And so it was always uh, it's always humbling whenever I get a chance to see an open door like I, I have and putting the things together. But I have to tell you, it's been it's been a struggle for me over these last uh, a few weeks as the situation that took place with the, the Hamas coming out and, and encouraging people to kidnap. Of course, there was the kidnapping of the three young men. 
we got one day once we found uh, once they found those three young men of course they were dead uh, the families buried them within 24 hours and not even 24 hours after that there wasn't even time to mourn uh, uh, the loss of life uh, we had the situation take place where the young how uh, Palestinian young man was actually then kidnapped and then uh, the next day which is really interesting the Israel, uh, Israeli uh, security was able to find the rem- his remains and then since then there's been a huge uh, uh, escalation that now I guess Hamas feels like well you know yes we encouraged uh, uh, kidnapping and yes we did not deny uh, um, involvement in the kidnapping and death of those three young teenagers but we will take responsibility now to avenge the death of this young man, which is an absolutely unexplainable, uh, despicable uh, act to, to for that young man to have been murdered. Innocent young man that was was uh, kidnapped and, and murdered, burned, actually. And now they have found the suspects. They have suspects. It's my understanding that even uh, a few of the suspects have already uh, confessed to their part in it. It says that these uh, these suspects are, are Jewish. There's some of them are uh, young young men, they, they just my understanding. We're going to hear more about that, but that actually gave license, supposedly, for Hamas to turn up the heat and for Palestinian people to protest. And there's not been any slowing down since then. And now we're at a place where there is milchama war that's taking place. Uh, missiles that are being fired from Gaza into uh, Sterot and, and the places right around there. Uh, also, as far as Jerusalem, uh, Haifa, Tel Aviv. And as I mentioned, there's this amazing uh, system called the Iron Dome that's been able to shoot down, they say, about 90 percent of the missiles that are actually on their way to the targets. Now, what I've decided to do is to upload for you those that want to hear more about this, this, this Iron Dome, which which for me has been a, a it's, it's been an amazing uh, revelation about what its meaning is and what it does but I was able to get the company to send me an English version of the promotion of what this this missile system does and so I'm going to put a link so that you can take a look at that short video it's a, it really is a quite remarkable what they've been able uh, to do but there is war. Uh, these these missiles are going back and forth. We don't know if there's going to be any let up before there could be a potential uh, ground invasion. And as and that happens, you get even more loss of life. As the BBB said, BBC said there was already 75 Palestinians that are dead. No Israelis um, since the escalation started with the missiles back and forth. But that certainly may not continue to be the case as um, as uh, things uh, escalate. We pray for the peace of Jerusalem. We pray that there be peace. And yet at the same time, I have to be uh, completely honest to say that, you know, sometimes uh, situations get like this and the only option is to have to have that that uh, that conflict, that that uh, that battle. And that, this battle that's taking place right now could could uh, escalate to even something uh, bigger. We pray that it, it, it not be the case that somehow, uh, you know, there would be a, a peace that would return. But it needs to be a peace that's a real peace. I mean, this this thing that's happening right now with so many uh, people and groups wanting the full and uh, utter destruction of Israel and, and being able to to do what they're doing, whether it be through uh, encouraging kidnappings, uh, missiles, uh, you know, terrorist attacks, the list goes on and on and on. And, and you've got this this small country there surrounded by many people who want to see uh, them destroyed. I I will say one thing that really was very, very disturbing to me uh, that I want to share was just that uh, a couple nights ago, Hamas was able to get uh, their missiles as far as uh, Jerusalem. And when the sirens went off in Jerusalem, uh, there were some big booms that took place. Uh, It didn't take long before there was actually a a group of uh, Palestinian people who rushed to the Temple Mount and began to celebrate as they were listening to the sirens going off and, and, and to, to, to celebrate on the Temple Mount uh, as as the missiles had uh, actually arrived in Jerusalem uh, was disturbing for me to, to be at that place, the place where God said his name uh, forever. And the people were there and, and, and cheering and it was uh, very disturbing. Anyway, so we are uh, in the midst of so much that's going on in the world. We want to keep an eye on the world. We're having one eye, of course, on our own situation here in the United States. So many things that are taking place. But for me, I always want to get back to Scripture. And that was where 
for me, this whole vision started. The Biblical Foundations Academy, uh, the vision I received was under uh, the Western Wall, deep down in the tunnels, where I saw these huge, huge stones. And, and that's what encouraged me to try to give people a chance to, to build a biblical foundation for their faith so that no matter what's happening in the world, we would have a biblical perspective. And that's why while I'm, you know, got an eye on Israel and watching what's going on, we're working diligently on a number of things that are going to help people in doing just that. One of them that I have to keep talking about is Scripture Bites. If you haven't seen the first uh, or beta version of Scripture Bites, the response has been amazing. But we've we realized that as we've been working on these, it's, it's taking us a lot of time uh, to get them ready for you to watch. I'll just give you an example. I was talking to our two amazing editors uh, that, that do the, the, the writing editing and then also our video editor. We've got uh, myself that does the first initial writing. And, and I, from my guesstimate right now, it's taking us about just approximately uh, about seven days from start to finish to complete one scripture bite. And, and why would we spend that kind of time and those kinds of resources? Because I think that the Scripture Bites really is a manifestation of everything that this vision has been about. It's a chance for people to open up their Bibles, to get a chance to, to see something about the, the language history and context of Scripture in an engaging and an inviting way. So be in prayer for us. We are we are working diligently. I'll, I'll, I'll just tell you how it works. You know, what happens is, is that I first have to be inspired to what, it, what, what part of Scripture I want to look into. I do my own personal study. I write it, pray about it, write it some more, pray about it, and then send that to our two amazing editors uh, that uh, that do their work to to go through and say, you know, Keith, can you really say it that way? You know, and then they 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 check it and fix it. It then comes back to me, and then what I do is I set up a chance to go over and to tape it after I make sure that it's clear for me. I go over and that tape it. That process uh, takes about a day where there's a taping and then there's some editing of the taping, etc. Then we send it to our, our, our video genius, <laughs> Sam the man. And when he gets it, then he starts uh, doing what he does with graphics to be able to, 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 to make the SBI work. It's called the Scripture Bytes interface, make it work. And sometimes we battle back and forth, me and that, that SBI. But basically, then when he goes through his process, that can take anywhere from two to three days for him to do that. I mean, one little section will take an hour, you know, for one little thing. But it's really well worth it. It then comes back and then we send it back to our editors where and they t put together a PDF a study guide that goes with the scripture bites. After we get that, then we've got to deal with our webmaster to get it uploaded and put there and, the, you know, et cetera. So what our goal is, is to try to get enough of these ready so that when we announce them, you won't have to wait. They'll be available. I will say right now I've made a big decision, and that is that we're actually doing a series right now specifically for our premium content library members. And I'm so thankful to those of you that are premium content library folks. What you're doing by uh, by signing up for that, that gives us a, a, an ability to have some people that we know every single month as little as seven ninety nine, And that that's, you know, as we have those people that are doing that, if we can get, you know, a few thousand, we'd be good. But <laughs> we've got some people that do that. So what I have done is um, uh, kind of held off on the, the, the public scripture bites, went ahead and made sure that we got the private premium content library series up. We got a 3T series, going to be amazing. Now we're working back again on what's going to go to the world for scripture bites. And so we're doing that, be in prayer for us. Also, I have to update you um, the right on time series. Um, that first episode, I've gotten some input from people. We're going to definitely have something ready before the seventh month. Uh, it's going to be exciting. It's going to be amazing. You're going to be you're going to love it. But I have to say, there's so much more behind that that I was able to to film that's going to just stay on that camera until we can get the resources to to produce it. But I will say it's it's all in, in time. It's amazing. It's going to be revelatory. And then lastly, I've been working on this issue regarding a prayer up there for up there, which has to do with the Temple Mount. And I've actually written that also in communication about finishing or at least continuing the process of producing that. So it's been amazing. I appreciate everybody that's been uh, putting their hand to the to the plow to help us. It's it's no small task. But I want to talk for a minute just a, a little bit about uh, what I like to do when I'm in, in times like these and difficulty. As I mentioned, you know, Israel's at war and, and they happen to be fighting uh, Hamas, uh, who has determined that they're going to uh, uh, do everything they can to to remove the oppressors, as they say. And, and then and then the other thing that's been just confusing to me is that uh, uh, Fatah says we're going to have a unity government with Hamas and 
And then somehow we're supposed to support that as the United States, which I, I still don't understand where you've got a half of the unity government that says we want to uh, destroy Israel and the other half saying they want to have to create some two state solution and, and peace talks. And it's all a bunch of nonsense uh, to me, to be honest. It has caused uh, a lot of confusion on a number of different levels. But but what I want to do is I wanted to take a little bit of a, a look at what I see th- I see happening right now with the situation, specifically with the one half of the unity government uh, called Hamas. There's a verse, a couple verses I want to bring up for the biblical brick of the week. I want to, as I mentioned, what I love to do is to open scripture, study scripture, read it, try to apply it. Uh, into my life and to share it with others as those that are are interested. But I just want to share this on a very, very, um, you know, it's not a real deep level, but I want you to take a look at this. The biblical brick of the week coming out of Psalms chapter 7, verses 12 through 16. It says this. If a man does not repent, he will sharpen his sword. He has bent his bow and made it ready. Now, I read that verse and I'm thinking, okay, so so a person doesn't repent. They decide, okay, I'm going to fight. In other words, I'm, 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 you know, I'm going to get, I'm going to get, I'm not going to turn from my way, my evil way. I'm going to, I'm going to fight. It goes on to say in 713, he is also prepared for himself deadly weapons. He makes his arrows fiery shafts. (laughs) It was hard for me to read this and not think about what's happening presently today over in Israel, where you've got one group uh, who basically has determined they're not going to turn from their way. And so they say, we're not going to turn from our way. We're not going to repent from what we've done. Rather, what we're going to do is we're going to bend our bow. We're going to get ready uh, our battle equipment. We're going to have our deadly weapons. We're going to make our arrows fiery shafts. You know, sounds like uh, Kassam missiles to me. Psalm 714. Behold, the travails, he travails with wickedness. And he conceives mischief and brings forth falsehood. In other words, there's lies that are being promoted. 715. He has dug a pit and hollowed it out and has fallen into the hole which he made, which I could talk about that just in in light of what happened in the first day of the response of Israel, where they went in with the airstrikes and there was a tunnel that was uh, actually uh, uh, that, that, uh, you know, that fell in uh, on some of the uh, uh, Hamas uh, people and of course they were very upset over this that uh, some of their their terrorists died in a tunnel that they dug for more terrorism 716 his mischief will return upon his own head and his violence will descend upon his own Uh, yes and his violence will descend upon him and the word that they use for violence is the word Hamas the very word for violence for the group that's in the unity government that's basically supposed to have peace talks with Israel called violence, called Hamas. What do we expect? What do they expect? What does anybody expect? If your name is violence, there's going to be violence. You're going to violate. And what Israel's got to make a decision about is how much patience do they have in dealing with a terrorist organization that has made its entire mission to be violence. How much patience do you have with violence? And so for me, I read this verse that's saying his mischief will return upon his head and his violence will descend upon him. His his Hamas will descend upon him. I think that that's exactly what we're saying. It's too late to have, uh, you know, let's, let's make sure there's restraint. Restraint about what? Restraint with while they're sending missiles over into people's, uh, you know, yards and homes and all that. I mean, something's got to happen and, and it's actually happening right now. So we do pray for peace. We do pray for intervention. We do pray that somehow there would be repentance and there would be a change of heart and mind. And and, and, and if not, basically this this passage here in, in Psalms 7, 12 through 16 uh, is my prayer that the that the ones that choose not to repent, the ones that are sharpening their swords, the ones that are preparing deadly weapons, uh, the ones that are lying and, and travailing with wickedness, the ones that have dug a pit and hollowed it out, that they would fall into their very hole that they have made, that their mischief will return upon their head and their own violence will descend upon them. So what did we expect? This is what we're seeing right now. We hope that there would be the, the uh, those that are innocent in this matter, that there would not be an innocent blood spilled. There's been enough innocent blood spilled um, 
by uh, people in that land uh, on a number of different fronts. And we do not, we, we, we pray that somehow, some way, our Father in Heaven would intervene to protect the innocent. And then as it pertains to these situations that are escalating, that the, they would be brought to a quick halt. And uh, whatever happens in the future, that it would change uh, uh, the environment that's taking place right now in Israel. So you all continue to do this, continue to pray for Israel and pray for people in Israel, but continue to pray for people here in the United States. There's so many things that are going on in Ukraine and Russia and Iraq and Iran and, and, and Mexico and, and different parts of, uh, of the world. We're in a very difficult time. The earth is travailing. There's something definitely that's going on that's uh it definitely has my attention and one of the things i love to do in all of that is to go back to the book i love to open scripture and to dive deep into scripture to get those wonderful uh pearls of perspective that continue to bless me on my walk i am very very encouraged uh, for those of you that have been walking with us those of you that have responded to our call those of you that have decided you're going to um share with us in this journey. I'm so thankful to the individuals who stepped up in a way that have been, has truly blessed us. It's continued to keep us working. Uh, There's going to be some changes though, folks, as we're going forward, as we get closer to that September 1st date, there's going to have to be some major changes in terms of how we do what we do. Uh, but, But we're committed to continue to provide excellent, high quality information, inspiration and revelation to people around the world. That is what we are going to continue to do, that people can build a biblical foundation for their faith, because as the world shakes, you better be sure that that foundation you're standing on is biblical. (laughs) And if it's biblical at its root, you're going to be all right, because that's going to give you the perspective from heaven. So here's what I want to ask you to do. If you will keep watching, if you will keep reading, if you will keep studying, if you will keep praying, if you will keep sharing, we will keep working. 